Chapter Three. Not all that Mrs. Bennet, however, with the assistance of her five daughters, could ask on the subject, was sufficient to draw from her husband any satisfactory description of Mr. Bingley. They attacked him in various ways, with bare-faced questions, ingenious suppositions, and distant surmises. But he eluded the skill of them all, and they were at last obliged to accept the second-hand intelligence of their neighbor, Lady Lucas. Her report was highly favorable. Sir William had been delighted with him. He was quite young, wonderfully handsome, extremely agreeable, and to crown the whole, he meant to be at the next assembly with a large party. Nothing could be more delightful. To be fond of dancing was a certain step towards falling in love, and very lively hopes of Mr. Bingley's heart were entertained. If I can but see one of my daughters happily settled at Netherfield, said Mr. Bennet to her husband, and all the others equally well married, I shall have nothing to wish for. In a few days, Mr. Bingley returned Mrs. Mr. Bennet's visit. And sat about ten minutes with him in his library. He had entertained hopes of being admitted to a sight of the young ladies, of whose beauty he had heard much, but he only saw the father. The ladies were somewhat more fortunate, for they had the advantage of ascertaining from an upper window that he wore a blue coat and rode a black horse. An invitation to dinner was soon. Afterwards, dispatched, and already had Mrs. Bennet planned the courses that were to do credit to her housekeeping, when an answer arrived which deferred it all. Mr. Bingley was was obliged to be in the town the following day, and consequently unable to accept the honor of the invitation, etc. Mrs. Bennet was quite disconcerted. She could not imagine what business he could have in town so soon after his arrival in Hertfordshire, and she began to fear that he might be always flying about from one place to another, and never settle at Netherfield as he ought to be. Lady Lucas quieted her fears a little by starting the idea of his being gone. London only to get a large party for the ball, and a report soon followed that Mr. Bingley was to bring twelve ladies and seven gentlemen with him to the assembly. The girls grieved over such a number of ladies, but were comforted the day before the ball by hearing that instead of twelve, he brought only six with him from London, his five sisters and a cousin. And when the party entered the assembly room, it consisted of only five altogether: Mr. Bingley, his two sisters, the husband of the eldest, and another young man. Mr. Bingley was good-looking and gentlemanlike. He had a pleasant countenance and easy, unaffected manners. His sisters were fine women with an air of decided fashion. His brother-in-law, Mr. Hurst, merely looked the gentleman, but his friend, Mr. Darcy, soon drew the attention of the room by his fine, tall person, handsome features, noble mien, and the report which was in general circulation within five minutes after his entrance of having ten thousand a year. The gentleman. Pronounced him to be a fine figure of a man. The ladies declared he was much handsomer than Mr. Wingley, and he was looked at with great admiration for about half the evening, till his manners gave a disgust which turned the tide of his popularity. For he was discovered to be proud, to be above his company and above being pleased. And not all his large estate in Derbyshire could then save him from having a most forbidding, disagreeable countenance, and being unworthy to be compared with his friend.
Mr. Bingley had soon ma- made himself acquainted with all the principal people in the room. He was a lively and unreserved, danced every dance, was angry that the ball closed so early and talked of giving one himself at Netherfield. Such amiable qualities must speak for themselves. What a contrast between him and his friend. Mr. Darcy danced only once with Mrs. Hurt and once with Miss Bingley, declined being introduced to any other lady, and spent the rest of the evening in walking about the room, speaking occasionally to one of his own party. His character was decided. He was the proudest, most disagreeable man in the world, and everybody hoped that he would never come there again. Amongst the most violent against him was Mrs. Bennet whose dislike of his general behavior was sharpened into particular resentment by his having slighted one of her daughters. Elizabeth Bennet had been obliged by the scarcity of gentlemen to sit down for two dances and during part of that time, Mr. Darcy had been standing near enough for her to hear a conversation between him and Mr. Bingley, who came from the dance a few minutes dance for a few minutes, to press his friend to join it. Come Darcy, he said, I must have you dance. I hate to see you standing about by yourself in this stupid manner. You had much better dance. I certainly shall not. You know how I detest it unless I am particularly acquainted with my partner. At such an assembly as this it would be insupportable. Your sisters are engaged and there is not another woman in the room whom it would not be a punishment to me to stand up with. I would not be so fastidious as you are, cried Mr. Bingley, for a kingdom. Upon my honor, I never met with so many pleasant girls in my life as I have this evening. And there are several of them you see uncommonly pretty. You are dancing with the only handsome girl in the room, said Mr. Darcy, looking at the eldest, Miss Bennet. Oh, she is the most beautiful creature I have ever beheld. But there is one of her sisters sitting down just behind you who is very pretty and dare I say very agreeable. Do let me Ask my partner to introduce you. Which do you mean? And turning round, he looked for a moment at Elizabeth, till catching her eye, he withdrew his own and coldly said, She is tolerable, but not handsome enough to tempt me. I am in no humor at present to give consequence to young ladies who are slighted by other men. You had better return to your partner and enjoy her smiles, for you are wasting your time with me. Mr. Bingley followed his advice. Mr. Darcy walked off and Elizabeth remained with no very cordial feelings toward him. She told the story, however, with great spirit among her friends, for she had a lively, playful disposition which delighted in anything ridiculous. The evening altogether passed off pleasantly to the whole family. Mrs. Bennet had seen her eldest daughter much admired by the Netherfield party. Mr. Bingley had danced with her twice and she had been distinguished by his sisters. Jane was as much gratified by this as her mother could be, though in a quieter way. Elizabeth felt Jane's pleasure. Mary had heard herself mentioned to Miss Bingley as the most accomplished girl in the neighborhood and Catherine and Lydia had been fortunate enough never to be without partners, which was all that they had yet learned to care for at a ball. They returned therefore in good spirits to Longbourn, the village where they lived, and all of which were the principal inhabitants. They found Mr. Bennet still up 
With a book, he was regardless of time, and on the present occasion, he had a good deal of curiosity as to the events of an evening which had raised such splendid expectations. He had rather hoped that his wife's views on the stranger would be disappointed, but he soon found out that he had a different story to hear. Oh, my dear Mr. Bennet, as she entered the room. We have had a most delightful evening, a most excellent ball. I wish you had been there. Jane was so admired; nothing could be like it. Everyone said how well she looked, and Mr. Bingley thought her quite beautiful, and danced with her twice. Only think of that, my dear. He actually danced with her twice. and she was the only creature in the room that he asked a second time first of all he asked miss lucas i was so vexed to see him stand up with her but however he did not admire her at all indeed nobody can you know and she seemed quite struck with jane as she was going down the dance so he inquired who she was and got introduced and asked for her asked her for the two next then the two third he danced with miss king and the two fourth with maria lucas and the two fifth with jane again and the two sixth with lizzy and the bowlanger if he had any compassion for me cried her husband impatiently he would not have danced half so much for god's sake Say no more of his partners. Oh, that he had sprained his ankle in the first place. Oh, my dear, I am quite delighted with him. He is so excessively handsome, and his sisters are charming women. I never in my life saw anything more elegant than their dresses. I dare say the lace upon Mrs. Hurst's gown. Here she was interrupted again. Mr Bennet protested against any description of finery she was therefore obliged to seek another branch of the subject and related with much bitterness of spirit and some exaggeration the shocking rudeness of mr darcy but i can assure you she added that lizzy does not lose much by not suiting his fancy for he is a most disagreeable horrid man not at all worth pleasing so high and conceited that there was no enduring him he walked here and he walked there fancying himself so very great not handsome enough to dance with i wish you had been there my dear to have given him one of your sit downs i quite detest the man hm how oh, you feeling sleepy so sure. hmm so how was it did you like my uh, impression of who was it mr darcy i thought it was pretty funny yeah yeah i found it so funny they keep calling jane not even like other people but just jane specifically creature that's just hilarious i mean Jane Austen wrote this book. If it she, did, she name Jane after herself. Is Jane going to be like the main character? I have to look this up. Was Jane Austen her real name? I actually don't know. I'll look it up tomorrow. But yeah, the fact that they keep everyone just keeps calling her creature is funny. I don't know if that's intended or not. But yeah, I mean, this was written like before copyright, so I'm assuming it's kind of like old English stuff. but it's so readable like it's not you know old kind of english that's like difficult to read this is very digestible very fun to read lot of humor also that i can relate somehow yeah very timeless piece let's see if i am speaking too much before i have read enough but yeah hmm i'm also enjoying reading these to you it's fun it's nice we don't get to spend too much time with each other anyways so this is always nice but yeah you have to be somewhere tomorrow okay cool 
go sleep now i hope that you are sleepy enough for my drowsy voice <laughs> okay